so here's the time for a story I said I would do like a little while ago I didn't get the chance and then when I got the chance I didn't have Wi-Fi and there was always something and um, I always feel like telling stories like if I don't do it it's just because I think it's gonna be too long <laughs> so uh, but I really like it so okay it's not even one minute yet I tried to do it within like 10 minutes even less than that if I can so uh, notice my beautiful dress this is the one i've made it's so pretty i love it i wore it to sleep this is why i've done it uh, i've done it to wear all the time like in the day and in my sleep whatever so it's a uh, organic cotton and i love it so yeah um okay so the story of why i decided to shave my hairs i thought i would never do it um i thought it was really stupid i thought people who were doing were really superficial um, of course my uh, thought changed about it but I'm telling you what I used to think and I had no mercy like I was really like like this is really stupid I, I'm not a kid why would girls do that uh, which is a bit ridiculous because if I shave my hairs in my leg it's not to look like a girl I do it because it's soft and it's nice so why wouldn't I do it for for the the pubic area but so it wasn't very common like I'm 36 I'm not 25 in in my in my time at school no one used to shave down there like we we were going to um, pool classes and um, like it happened sometimes that we, some girls had hairs sticking out of their bikini uh, not bikini like a uh, batting suit and it was like the ever uh, the, the thing that everyone feared like we were so afraid that our hairs would stick out and i'm like why no one cut it and no one like shaved it but no one touched it i, I swear like uh, maybe someone did but i didn't know like uh, i didn't cut it i didn't do anything it was just the way it was um <laughs> when like i didn't even cut it at all for my first shoots uh yeah um, and then I thought I looked normal, you know, like some once a photographer told me, well, maybe you could at least like trim it. And I'm like, fuck it. But then I trimmed it a little bit, but it took me some, some thinking. <laughs> and I swear it was very long. Why I know it? I wouldn't know it just by reminding it. I would re record it. But I saw a picture when I was pregnant <laughs> and it was really long. It was like my belly was like that and the hair was like sticking out. Yeah, it was really long. I needed to do something. It's not very nice for guys, you know. I understand that it's natural, but I forgot how it was. But maybe it was kind of entering. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> so I thought I would never take it off. And then I was going to Germany for the first time when I was 33. And um, the photographer up there was all telling me, will you be shaved, will you be shaved? And I'm like, why would I shave? Like, fuck them. Uh, I, like, I used to go a lot in the States and like surprisingly in the States, they really want art and they don't want shaved model. They want like very natural model. And I was kind of used to it. Like, And s a lot of photographers used to shoot a lot of model who um, were shaved, but they were happy to try like someone who were not shaved for once you know like a lot of photographer like booked me and I was the first person they shot with hairs so I was kind of used to open mind people willing to try something else and like they're really happy about it you know like and I, I kind of had like made myself a name even if I had hairs like I was definitely one of the first model to keep the hair and it wasn't like a political statement it was just because I didn't give a fuck because I was working in farms like when I was younger you know and I, I never shaved my hairs nowhere nowhere and back in the days it wasn't something fashionable you know like now I have a stepsister who's into all the biggest movement like um, Black Lives Matter, Native American, uh, feminism all those movements that are just um, directed by uh, someone above her, her you know like you, anyway yeah uh, but back in the days like you know in 2004 I didn't shave and she was the one laughing at me and being shy to be in public with me because I wasn't shaving so 
and now she would be the one laughing at me because I am shaving, but not her because she wants to make a statement. And I think it's completely absurd how things kind of changed, you know, like before I was uh, not fashionable because I wasn't shaving and everyone was shaving and now I'm still not fashionable because <laughs> I'm shaving. So yeah. Uh, it, it, that won't work for me. I will die like that. <laughs> um, I, I I really think that everyone should just do what they feel, you know. And so all the photographers were, weren't like were asking me to shave, and I really didn't want to do it anyway, you know. I'm like, no, I will go in Germany and I won't shave, you know. But a lot of photographers were telling me, okay, I will book it book you this time, but if you come back, I would like to book you shave because. I don't have anything to do with pictures with a girl with hairs or whatever. Like they were telling me some argument that were, I didn't care about it. And one day I went in Germany and I shot with that guy, Rudolf, who kind of changed my life in his own way. Uh, he was very spiritual and he was friend. Well, I never met him, but um, he was close to the Switzerland border. And I was also in touch with a photographer who was in Frankfurt like uh, three hours away they never met but they've been chatting together for like a few years on like on, on like uh, on a website um, like model mayhem but in germany so they, they've been chatting for years and they never know each other and i met the two in that trip and i went in greece two times with claudio and i shot maybe four times with him but with rudolf i shot only twice with him and the both were very nice kind man very generous and very spiritual like um, when Claudio wife died in like 85 I think he told me when I was in Greece with him he told me that when she died he heard the numbers and I said what number he said well the lottery numbers I said what he said yeah yeah she she told me like the seven numbers and when I was about to play the day after there was one number I thought ah oh, this number is not right so I change it and I change it so instead of earning like a hundred, uh, uh, I don't know how much dollar, but like really the big thing, like a million or something, he earned only like 3000 euro. I'm like, what? So she's in your dream, your wife who died sent you the right lottery number. He's like, yeah, yeah. He, he seemed not very surprised about it. So, wow, I never heard any stories like that in my life. And uh, so that was Claudio, who was friend with Rudolf, who, booked me in Germany when I was 33 and I still had hairs. So we had a discussion about it during the shoot. And um, once we were just shooting and he said, uh, what's your birth date? I said, well, it's today. I told you um, the, my birth date is 12-12. So I told you we're shooting the day of my birthday. He said, oh yeah, I forgot about it. How old are you? I'm like, I'm 33. Oh, 33, the age of the Christ, the Christ, the Jesus became the Christ at 30 and he stayed the Christ for three years, three months and three days until and then he told me all those things about like um, Rudolf Steiner wrote about uh, the Christ and stuff that like kind of interested me because I never no one ever told me talked to me about Jesus like that so I was like oh and we took kind of a long break like it was a four hour shoot and I think he told me about the Christ and about my birthday and about the age 33 for maybe like uh, like 20 or 30 minutes I'm like oh this is a quite a long break you know for for a shoot because he's paying me but it was very interesting and I told he asked me what I wanted to do for that year and I said I'd like to go in the Himalayan mountain because this is what I wanted to do which is very strange because I read a book uh, maybe two years ago that a guy went to the Himalayan mountain and when he 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 got out of the bus he met like a monk or something and he said uh, who are you what are you going to do here are you going to hike and meet people how are you 33 years old and the guy said yes i said why do you know he said because everyone who come here to hike and to to seek for the spiritual uh, in their spiritual journey are 33. so i was when i read that i'm like oh and that book disappeared i cannot find it anymore um yeah, so I kind of had the, the same call, but then I didn't go because uh, Rudolf told me that since, okay, this is him telling me that, uh, since the Christ came on earth and he was hanging on the cross, 
um, he bled the, the, the blood that he bleed uh, came on earth and since then we are part of that blood you know like this is the Christian view of it or something like I've, I've heard that before that we all kind of part of the blood of Christ but uh, I never really cared about it but then he told me that with so much intensity and then he's like since the Christ came on earth we all gods we can do whatever we want in life we don't care about shit we don't need to go for for 2000 years in the mountain of Himalaya to look for our spirituality we are gods at the moment that we are born we are gods so he told me that I'm like Oh, this is an interesting point of view. Okay. So and he, he ended up, his conclusion was like, I like pussies. <laughs> so I can, I can shit pussy. I don't mind. I do what I want. And he told me his point of view. I'm like, okay, this is kind of funky. I will just think about it. You know, I thought it was kind of very, um, like eccentric point of view, but it was so different that I just caught myself thinking about it a lot in the next days. And I, I'm i like, okay, so if we are partly gods, that means that we really can do whatever we want. So that means we are totally free. That means I can I don't need to make so much effort to, to develop my spirituality because it's already there, which I understand which makes, makes sense also so i just thought about it and i'm like yeah i think i think it's right you know like if he likes pussy and he, he can like some people would not ask models to shoot and would especially not ask model to shoot their their pussies because they would be shy they would think oh what if but blah, 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 blah. but he wants to do it and he finds this model and he does it and it's it's nice you know like he he just is very clear about what he wants. And that is something that I liked in Germany, that all the photographers are very clear about what they want. And this is perfect, you know, because the model gets to say yes or no. And in the States, sometimes the photographer won't tell what they want and they will try to sneak it in or try to take a picture of the pussy when the model is not looking or stuff like that, you know. So I really prefer the way that German are very direct. And yeah, so... <laughs> So when I came back home, like I really liked Rudolf, even if he was very eccentric. And he said, if you ever come back in Germany, I'd like to book you, but only if you shave, because I don't have anything to do with the picture. Like I have the ballerina nut shave Siri, but if we could do the ballerina shaved with like head spreading, uh, head, <laughs> leg spreading and stuff and have no hairs, it would be very erotic. It would be very nice. So I'm like, yeah, in your dreams. And then I came back home. And I remember the date because it was my birthday, 12-12, and I came back, I think it was like December 19th, 19th. And then uh, I was with my boyfriend and he was uh, shoveling the snow outside. And I went in the bath or the shower and I thought, why not? But I need to tell you before, yeah, that, that's the main point. Ah, shit, it's 13 minutes, I knew it. Ah, how can I? talk for so long like seriously i feel like i have been talking for maybe five minutes it's gonna take a while to upload anyway okay i i try to speed up <laughs> but this is a story i knew it was a long story um yeah before shaving i thought okay what if like maybe it's right maybe we can do whatever we want but i think just shaving is a fashion you know it, it's a fashion that happened in like in 2000 something and i don't like to be a product of fashion i want to be who I want to be and I thought well what if it, it's not a fashion what if other people did it back in the days and then I thought well yes because I've always wondered why the Greek statues they don't have hairs so if it's a fashion they used to do it back in Greece too so so then I studied that and then yeah I was right like it just depends on the tribe of, uh, of the society. It depends on a lot of things, but a lot of people used to shave. Um, there was even a name in ancient Rome to name the hairs that grow back after you shave the hair that sticks. So there was a name for that. And in I think it was in Egypt, they even had like a mixture of uh, bee wax with something else to shave, to take off the hairs there. So, and in Greece, I think it was used to difference male and woman in the bath. So, woman used to shave hair. 
there so we could easily recognize it or whatever so when i learn about it i'm like and then i came to the conclusion that it's maybe the 70s were the first years that people in fact didn't shave because they had so much oppression from the church that the woman didn't even know like they had the pussy that like some people didn't even some woman didn't even know where the woman were giving kids from because they never saw a pussy they, they, like i remember seeing a story like the woman thought that the kids were maybe coming from the nose because that zone was so like mysterious and no one ever talked about it and like the periods were called the sickness in french like you say me maladie when the woman was uh, in her period she was saying i'm in my sicknesses in french so this is very mysterious you know so why would women have shaved during during like from maybe 1920 until you know until they finally liberated in the 70s and then everyone got naked so everyone got to see that everyone had hairs but that was the way it was because no one cared about that zone for so many years this is what i think so maybe that was the only period in the world that no one shaved because no one cared no one saw it so except the man but yeah so uh, so then the woman started to shave when they started to undress and that's it you know so when i learn about it i'm like okay so it's not a fashion thing so it's, it's it's a very personal thing so i'm like oh well what do i have to lose i'm a god <laughs> i can do whatever i want so, and it's, it would grow back but i was like oh but in case i have the shooting it's gonna be weird you know but uh, it was december and i knew that my next shoot were only in february so i had the time to to grow it back well it's tough but it's it's much longer in fact so i was in the shower and then i shaved for the first time of my life at 33 and i will always remember because when i shaved i looked and i was like oh my god what's that well, i made a mistake i i like <laughs> in french when you break something you said scrap i felt like i scrapped my body that i uh, there would be no coming back i yeah i know this sounds crazy but when you see a zone you haven't seen for at least 20 years of your body you're like yeah that was really intense and then i kind of touch it and i'm like well it's mine where was it like it's like if i i remember being in a bath when i was young and seeing that part of me and then not seeing it for again for so many years so I re i'm like it's mine i'm allowed to to see it you know so so then i went out of the bath and i look at myself in the mirror and i was like i didn't think it was too nice it, i don't think it's that pretty it, around like the lip zone uh, but I think it's pretty like when you stick your legs together it makes a triangle and I think it's very nice like the statues so um, I like I like that and it was soft you know and I noticed that I could see the line of my abs that went lower than where the hair hairs were so I enjoyed seeing more of my abs because I thought oh well for my exercise it's, it's better I, I know even better like where is my muscle so so that was a good thing for me and then i started to tell my friends that they should shave because it's nice <laughs> anyway so when my boyfriend came back from shoveling i said i had a surprise and then i felt like i was six years old so you know earlier i said that i thought that women who were shaving wanted to be like girls so i felt a bit like that at that moment and i and i didn't like it but it's because i was so shy i was so shy even to show it to myself so can you imagine how shy i was to show it to someone else like i've been with that guy for six years though so i was kind of comfortable but but oh my god i wouldn't have done it for a guy i was just with him for like a few months because it was too much like for me it was such like a big deal so like he, he took his time and then he yeah he, he told me that he he didn't care whether i would shave or not but i was like i'm sure he preferred it shave i'm sure and he never said it but eventually i kind of understood that of course he preferred and then my other friend like in in spain told me oh my god it's it's much nicer when you keep your hair for shooting like it's not artistic when you shave and i'm like yeah but for sex it's much better he said yeah but you're gonna get used to it and it's gonna come back as before you know you won't have more sensation eventually 
like, oh, okay, maybe. So he was right. I think like sexually, like eventually it doesn't change anything. But what I like is to alter. So sometimes I have hair, sometimes I don't. So when I shave again, it's just nice. But uh, these days I'm always shaving because um, um, I'm in a relation and uh, it's not really nice when the, the little hairs come back and it's just make it nicer. And it's, in fact, you know, if you ask a man to shave here, well, you should also make an effort and shave there. It's not much an effort anyway. So it's, it's very fast to do. So I've been shaving since then. But so that was the story. So after shaving once, I thought I would maybe never shave again. But I was comfortable, you know, like it took a little while because I was used to be hidden. And I realized, you know, I was 33. If I was really for it, it's fine because I was old enough, you know. Because I also, before that, I wasn't ready to expose myself that much. And the, it's why I'm saying it's a personal choice. Because some girls, if they had the pressure of their friends or some, of the society, they could shave at like 14 or something. But they they don't, they maybe not feel comfortable to expose their labia to everyone who see them naked, you know. Like I was really glad to have them, to have it hidden for so many years. I was really, like I had sex for the first time at 18. So I wasn't really like... Um, I'm, I'm more like sensual than sexual like sex wasn't very important for me so so I wouldn't have like show it to everyone but since I was comfortable with my boyfriend for so many years I felt that I had control of that zone and I was a woman and I and some photographer told me they heard that before like when a girl feel like a woman they were ready to to like expose that zone because they, they feel they're they're in control so I think that's it. I think that's the whole story. So um, yes, the Christ is involved in my process of shaving my <laughs> my um, pubic area. And uh, yeah, I think I, I said everything. And today is snowing. Let me show you. Look at that. Oh, you can not see here. Yes, this is a big storm uh, just for today and then the summer is gonna come back look how nice, nice it is and um, I made that painting a few months ago and I finally hook it there I think it's nice okay so uh, 22 minutes not too far from 10 minutes as I planned <laughs> have a good day everyone thanks for following me